Smith, the legend. Where you at? What key are you at right now? I'm actually home, Big O. I was able to spend back home. Okay. I was able to spend three nights and four days in Key Largo, beautiful Key Largo. The key to the whole thing, Big O, and it was a little chilly, but the key was I left my cell phone in the safe in the hotel room for almost the entire time. Completely really? disconnected. It was so powerful and important because all I do is look at my cell phone 24 hours a day. We all do. Yeah. I mean. Get it, get into crypto and you'll be looking at it 25 hours a day. <laughs> and there's only 24 hours in a day. So yeah, uh, yeah that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a way to do it. That's all right. So you're, you're refreshed and reloaded. Uh, well, the dolphins continue to reload their offensive coaching staff. Your thoughts on the latest hire on the offensive side first with Daryl Bevel. Yeah, you know, Daryl Bevel was a guy who's been around the National Football League. I think it was important for Mike McDaniel to add some coaches with, you know, that are a little longer in the tooth because he's a young guy. And Daryl Bevel has been a interim head coach twice, which, you know, could be helpful. I mean, here's a guy who's been thrust into a situation to be in charge when that wasn't the plan going into the season. So, you know, there are a few guys – who, uh, you know, look, McDaniel has been in the National Football League a long time for a young guy. And so he knows a lot of coaches. He's seen a lot of defenses. He's dealt with a lot of different professional athletes. And just in looking at the totality of his staff, some of the names aren't, you know, big names per se. But if you speak to the people who are in those places, like the, the young BC coach that's coming in for the offensive line. Absolutely. Very well respected as an outstanding teacher and a good communicator and a person who's very smart. It certainly seems to me that McDaniel, who has the reputation of being a very smart, intellectual guy, he's trying to add a bunch of coaches who bring that as well, the intellectual approach. I'm with you. Uh, Applebaum is the guy that replaces Frank Smith. That's what's happening. That's, that's him playing chess. Because Frank is obviously the guy because he's had a lot of success already and he'll be the main guy, but Applebaum will be learning off of him, right? And then if he loses Smith, Applebaum will be the guy. This is what I talked about with Flo for many, you know, for many months now. A head coach, it's not about building a staff. It's about building multiple staffs because you're going to constantly lose or fire people or they're going to get hired somewhere else or whatever it is. It's just, that's business. And, and so I like the way he's kind of structuring things. And what you mentioned also is so key. He did what Flo wasn't willing to do, bring in an older coach that has more experience than him. You have a couple of those guys as sounding boards. That's a positive for you as a young coach. You know, it seemed like, like uh, like Flo wanted everybody to be below him pretty much throughout the whole thing. And I like that this guy is open to that. And he's also thinking a little bit ahead. Yeah, you know, it's not easy to build a staff as a guy who's never been a head coach at any level. And so the fact that a few guys, including Wes Welker, who I know quite well, yeah. willing to come over from the 49ers is a positive. You're going to have these receivers and tight ends uh, being taught the same way they were in San Francisco, which should lead to better blocking and more yards after catch. Those are the points of emphasis for the tight ends and receivers this season. I, I think that Mike McDaniel's offense is going to be creative. It's going to be interesting. And I think there's going to be a sense of responsibility in the blocking game for all 11 players on the field. I remember when I was speaking to Wes Walker at the Super Bowl in Miami, and he was a San Francisco wide receiver as a new uh, position coach. And he was telling me about his relationship with Debo Samuel. And he was telling me about how he told Debo that they were going to run together every morning at 6 a.m. until he got into better shape. And sure enough, they ran and ran and ran. And, of course, Debo became a Pro Bowl level receiver. But the thing that Welker also told me that day at Hard Rock Stadium, ironically enough, is that he told all of his players – if I don't see you giving full effort in the area of blocking, you are not going to be on the field. You are not going to play in this offense. Right. Yeah. 
this this just occurred to me. This is very random. The Dolphins obviously need to add a few receivers, including a fast guy to replace Will Fuller so they can run those post routes that they like to run off play action after you get the run game going. It's obviously going to be a run-based offense. But here's a sleeper for you. Preston Williams, who has done nothing, admittedly, since his rookie season, he is a sneaky, outstanding blocking receiver. Just something that popped in my head. Maybe Preston gets a little bit of new life. I'm not saying for sure, but just something to think about. Maybe with a fresh right. start, a new position coach, maybe. Yeah, but, but his new position coach has nothing to do with drop balls and injuries. And that's what he is. He's a sack of injuries, and he's a sack of drop balls. And so yeah. I, I don't know how you change that. That, that, that part of the game – and blocking, so now we're going to put him in positions where he has more contact. A guy that's often injured, yeah, I, I kind of, um, yeah, I'm not. He's as flimsy as Dogecoin. And you know, I'm not saying that Preston Williams is going to be a key part of the Dolphins' 22 offense. In the same way, we don't know if Lynn Bowden will be a key part of the Dolphins' 22 offense. But, but I, I have more hope for Lynn Bowden is what right. I'm yeah, At and least I, I have that. hope for Lynn Bowden. I have no hope. I, I've lost hope completely. Yeah, I understand. I just say a little sneaky. And he will get – He will. You, you did nail it, by the way. He will get the fresh start here. Yeah. Because little. the new coach will just, like, say, hey, look, man, everything that happens, done. Here, you want to yeah. earn your spot? Here you go. And he'll have this whole offseason to, to try to earn it, I'm it's sure. A little sneaky – kind of back of the wide receiver room. Hey, what if they can find a niche for him? What if he can kind of rediscover himself? I'm not saying it's going to happen. It's just something that popped into my mind. I Obviously, love your idea. No, yeah. no, dude, you're on target. Yeah, yeah. The, talent wise, you're a thousand percent right that he could be a force for you in the last offense and in this upcoming offense. But the question is, kid, when, when's it going to happen? When, are you, when, when, are, when is your body going to hold up, and when are you going to stop dropping passes? Now, maybe Lynn things. Bowden can do some of the things that we saw Albert Wilson do in the Adam Gase offense that one year where Albert right. and Jakeem were very exciting with the jet sweeps and the reverses and the screens. I agree. You're going to see more screens. So, you know, it's this is a compelling spring and summer you know, usually it's it's sort of, you know, boring and mundane, but, you know, uh, I like what McDaniel is saying about Tua. I like that he has come out, Big O. I know you saw this quote. He said that the players have scars and his job is to basically build up their confidence. Love that. Love that. Of course. That's Love their, that. That's and, the and, By the way, the offensive line coach has got an enormous job of doing that because those guys are beaten down. They're not that bad. But but when you fail and fail and fail and fail and fail, it's only human nature that you've lost some confidence in yeah, your I'm told team. that those guys' confidence was damaged by the previous staff. I'm they. told that their, dam their confidence was damaged. Now, would you like to see Big O in the spring? You might have an alternate plan, but still, would you like to see Austin Jackson get some offensive tackle reps again to see if he can maybe do it? Well, he well that this I was talking about this with Omar yesterday. Oh, okay, he fits perfectly in this scheme. Athletic, he's, a, he's athletic enough actually to play in this scheme. So he might, and, and in a zone scheme, he might actually excel more than being put out in a one-on-one -on -one situation because you're gonna have you're gonna have moving moving lines and they're going to be in sync together and they're they're kind of like walls that move together at times in tandems and stuff and so he's not going to be alone in those tandems and i think that that may end up helping him out a little bit but again it's joe you nailed it it's all about the coach having to rebuild the confidence of all these guys and find it back again and show them on tape hey you see what you did here at usc going to get you to do that here look this is you've got it in you you just weren't you know and you weren't taught the right way and all now, those I will say this i don't want that to be the primary plan there needs to be a of course veteran capable free agent nfl tackle sign at least one preferably two okay that way boston jackson ends up at, ta at guard guard perfectly fine it's perfectly fine 
So, yeah. you know, what I'm saying is I'm intrigued. It's, it's going to be some new plays, some new wrinkles, some new enthusiasm. Listen, I love I was I watched the Super Bowl in Key Largo. It was really nice. We had a nice little setup, and uh, and it was just very relaxed. And they were bringing us. You would have loved it. Chicken wings and and uh, some uh, some uh, rum drinks. It was very nice. Nice. Big nice. But, what, but after the game, I was listening to the Rams players, including that veteran offensive tackle Whitworth, and he was saying, "Former Bengal, by the way, former Bengal." A lot of he says a lot of coaches scream and yell. He goes, "What this staff, including Coach McVay, are all about is about positivity and positive energy and building confidence and having fun." He actually said that football can be fun, and 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 I know that we always go from you know discipline, strict, tough, you know, and all that to players, coach. Um, but I, I'm kind of looking forward to this, you know, fun. You're, you're allowed to have fun. You're allowed to smile. You're allowed to talk about your teammate. You know, the Patriots have these rules where you're right. not allowed to compliment your teammate on the record. You get called out by your coaches for saying flattering things about your teammates. And right. coaches say that they don't celebrate the players. They say that publicly. All right, right. So let's dump all that. Let's put it in a box, put it in the dirt, bury it in the backyard. All that negative stuff, let's let's – no more Patriots way bull crap. All right. Let's have some positive energy, some smiles. You football can be fun. Pete Carroll has won plenty of games, okay, without being some crazy. Yeah, he was a fun guy. You're right. Player. You're right about that. You're right about that. All right. Andy Reid is not, to my knowledge, a big jerk. You're, you're right about that again. All yes. Right. So you can right. win without being a jerk. Sean McVay has shown it. Let me show let me tell you why I agree with you a thousand percent on all of that. And it's and it, and do you have kids? You have how many? You have one or two? One child, yeah. One child. How old is how old is she right uh, now? Nine year old daughter. Okay, so she's nine, not yet, but it'll 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 get there a little bit more. But they're different now, and people are wired differently nowadays. Kids are wired differently. This genera the last two generations are wired differently. They don't. We grew up with a belt and a shoe. And whatever it was is discipline. You can't do those things nowadays. You can't scold kids anymore nowadays. A teacher in class, in, back in my day, I would hear teachers say, you'll never amount to anything. You this, that, what? You could never say that nowadays in a classroom because they'll expose you to all of that. The way you communicate with young people in today's world is that way. They do not handle tough love. That's a different generation, and very few kids can handle tough love. They have to grow up in that environment in their families and have to understand it. Now, because, let, me ask you this. let me ask you this. Under Adam Gase, the Dolphins were one of the most penalized teams in the NFL on an annual basis. Under Brian Flores, the Dolphins were one of the least penalized teams. we mm -hmm. got to give him credit and his staff credit. For now, do you believe that that has more to do with the amount of time they spent teaching the techniques that are unlikely and likely to draw penalties or the overall tone of discipline and structure and no, teaching, response? teaching, teaching? That's how they respond. I'm hoping, I'm big O, I'm hoping. Communication, bro. I'm hoping that the Dolphins can still be on the lower side of penalties. You know what I mean? With right. that, with with these with flow being gone. I hope there's not a direct and only direct correlation between discipline and firmness and seriousness and penalties. Well, it doesn't it doesn't look like Zach Taylor or Sean McVay are those kind of coaches. I have to look up where those teams ranked in penalties. Obviously, you don't have to be among the league's best in fewest penalties to win. But Although, it is an important uh, by the way, where the where were the Dolphins ranked this year? Didn't they drop this year from yeah, the first two years? Good. Yeah, they weren't as okay. good. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought to, I thought this year the the penalty stuff wasn't was they. I think they were middle of the pack. In other yeah, words, after being in the top were at five the, in the previous two years, but a lot right. of it had to do with like the offensive line was a mess. False start, hold, right? False start, hold, hold. Confidence, poor teaching. Yeah. 
you know, all those things just made, you know, and, I feel bad. Just, I feel bad for Lem Jean Pierre. Okay. Nice guy put in a spot. Right. He never should have been put in, put right. in a spot. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. And, and, and I, and this is not me talking. This is information that, that any of us could get. All right. About the offensive line and how they felt at a loss. Of course. They didn't have a guy that had the answers. Yeah. No, that's totally understandable. It's, and you're right. It's not Pepe Le Pew's fault. I mean, it, you know, it is what it is. It's like the whole Ted Ginn thing. Ted Ginn went on to have a really solid career, dude. He should be very proud of the career he had in the NFL. Now, it's not his fault he was picked number nine in the draft. It's not his fault that then comes the expectations of number nine when he wasn't supposed to be picked as the number nine pick in the draft. And then he gets labeled a bust. And it's not his fault because he really wasn't a bust. He turned out to be a good player in the NFL, just not one that would justify the well, number nine pick. You can in the say NFL. the same thing about Tua and Jalen Waddell. Jalen Waddell, very good player, clearly going to be a very good player in the National Football League for many years. He will always have to live up to the not only the value of the fifth pick, but also that they passed on Kyle Pitts and Jamar Chase. That it's not his fault that the Dolphins passed on Jamar Chase and Kyle Pitts. Has nothing to do with Jalen Waddle. Doesn't mean it's he doesn't part of the conversation. Yeah, was he? Not, you're you're already moved on that he's lesser than them, and I have not yet because he was on a lesser offense. If he gets on a better offense, which hopefully this year, if they've got if they've got a running game and those linebackers are sucked up, you're going to watch Jalen Waddle have 500 more yards than he had last year with the same amount of catches. And he'll have more touchdowns than he had last year. Yeah, very good player. If you, have a, if you have a running game. So that's the, very that's good player. But unfortunately, it's just very it. clear. Very clear. Very clear. I was a Jamar Chase. The White House says. The president is very Chase. clear. Uh-huh. I was a Jamar Chase guy. but Jamar but Chase is. He's a stud. An absolute all pro. And Justin Herbert, unfortunately for Dolphin fans, a stud, a superstar. And so it might be unfair to Tua that people are always going to say, you're the fifth pick. You went ahead of Justin Herbert. But, you know, that's the, the bed that the Dolphins made for Tua. Now well, that's, that's, you're changing the you're, I'm not ready to make that bed. You're, you've already – like we've already talked about this. You moved on. I think you're going to be proven wrong and a lot of other people starting next year with Tua and that offense. And all of a sudden he's going to look like a completely different quarterback when he actually has coaching and he's going to look a lot more effective. I think he's going to be he's better. More I'd like to be on, on record on the uh, America Dream Lending Big O segment. I'd like to be on record. I think Tua is going to be better in his third season. I think Mike McDaniel is going to help. I think the new offensive line coach is going to help. I think the new run game coordinator and passing game coordinator, I think he's going to be healthier. I think he's going to have more confidence. And I think he's going to – I think he's going to be better. I would be very surprised if Tua Tungavailoa is not a much improved quarterback in 2022. Yeah, I, I expect him to make the playoffs with this team. You recorded That's that part, right? Did you record huh? that part? Did you record it's, that part? It's recorded every week. It's there. Okay. It's not going anywhere. You're locked in. Anyway, we have you already on record that you've given up on Tua. So we, you know, well, I never next said year, that. Don't put words next year when he kicks ass, I want to tell you something. The people he on Twitter plays Herbert. Big O, the people on Twitter. I want, you you read Twitter, right? They they Big O. Yeah. They say that I let you push me around, and I I, don't, I think I maybe got a I got a I don't know. What do you think on that? No, you don't it's think. So? Why, why do you listen to that? Oh, I read all the tweets. <laughs> they, they 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 hear whatever they want to hear a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? Some of them may like you and hate me. Some of them may hate you and like me. And then the 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 you know the 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 opinion is bias. Sometimes people don't realize like we've known each other for 20 years. 20 years is a long time. So sometimes people who know each other for 20 years speak to each other in a tone that's different than like someone you know for six months. You know what I mean? Plus, I'm not doing fluff radio interviews. I'm not just, I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? I'm going to have some fun. We're going to challenge each other. That's why I think there's a reason why we're pacing 25 million downloads this year. Because when you come on, or Omar, or Cam, or Manny Navarro, or Ira Winderman, it's just not going to be a fluff interview. We're going to go back and forth. We're going to challenge each other. 
We're going to have opinions that are right and wrong, and that's sports talk. And that's kind of the, the I think that's perfectly okay. fine. And I think that's why when you were on various other platforms, I always uh, was always uh, uh, willing and perfectly happy to join your show. Thank you. I always appreciated that. And uh, that's why I think uh, we've got a nice big ass family here doing what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? And and, and hopefully growing in a in a, in a nice direction here. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun. All right. So. Uh, the linebacker coach, what can you tell us about Tyrone McKenzie? I don't know. I don't know him. I haven't – remember, I told you my cell phone was in a safe for four days. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I, I read one thing that the team where he came from, that the fans were upset that he left. So that's a good thing. If the yeah. fans are like, oh, I can't believe we lost this guy. How do we let this guy go? That is good. Listen, as it relates to outside linebackers – uh, you know, Jerome Baker, does he stay on the outside in, or does he move to the inside? No, I really no like he's never Baker been an inside. Out. He's never been an inside backer, Joe. Right. Come so on, we agree you... that he should be primarily on the edge. Sometimes you move him inside for a change of pace, a different look. But I thought he was much better when he moved from inside linebacker. Because he doesn't have the body to play inside. He's not a thumper, dude. He's not a Landon Roberts. And I... We'll see if Alandon sticks around. He was a flow guy. By the way, uh, Rap Sheet had a nice nugget. He said the Dolphins have hired Tyrone McKenzie as their new outside linebackers coach. Source said a former Patriot player and bright young coach. McKenzie has spent time coaching linebackers with Titans, Lions, and Colts. So uh, Rap had uh, at least a little nice nugget about him being Darius a, Leonard, a bright and young and Kyle Van Noy, I guess. Yeah. So that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, but he wasn't there with the Lions this year where he helped a former first-round pick of the Miami Dolphins actually have a half-decent season. I want to learn some more about Gerald Alexander's departure. I was I was disappointed. We never know what happens behind the scenes. Obviously. Flow guy. What's that? A flow guy. Oh, so, so you believe that Gerald supporting flow publicly hurt his standing with the organization? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I never know what goes on behind the scenes, but the players really respected this guy. And yeah. he is with us in the media. He was unbelievable at explaining things. And um, he's a bright young coach, man. He's I, one I thought of those guys that's was on a path to a defensive coordinator job or a college head coach job. And I will say this, you know, sometimes you get a little setback or sidetrack and that doesn't mean that, you know, you're not going to make it. I, I thought this guy was going to make it. So I, I'm rooting for him. I think he is going to make it. It's just it'll be somewhere else. Different track. Like when you, you probably have some comments during the year about Flo, and then maybe you think he's going to survive, and then others hear your comments, and they know where you stand, and then all of a sudden when the whole Flo thing breaks, then you're left on an island, and you're like, yeah, that guy's got to go because he's from the other side. And so I can't have somebody that's you know from the other side in the middle of a lawsuit, and then I'm here yeah, trying but to. I, but I mean, a Boyer uh, is a flow guy, right? I mean, Boyer. Well, Boyer, apparently, yes and no. <laughs> flow gave Boyer his first defensive coordinator job. You know what I mean? I know, I know. But there were plenty of guys that came in. Even two guys came with Flow from New England, and those two guys were then shipped out. So the the and and there's talk that he was taking stuff from 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 Boyer and giving the 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 responsibility to Alexander and all that so that became also a rift inside the defensive room too on top of i mean it was a mess dude a mess he had a mess going on with his offensive coordinators he had a mess going on with his defensive staff it was you know he, well, he listen, just, i have no personal harmony will. was not his strength bro I have no personal ill will towards Brian Flores. I hope he's able to get a, a coaching job, even you know, college or whatever. Uh, if he's blackballed from the NFL, I hope that you know. I don't, I'm not directly comparing him to Colin Kaepernick, but we never saw from Colin Kaepernick again. I well, that was that that's Colin's fault. I always I blame hope, Colin for that. I hope that this is in a situation where you know Flo never gets to coach again. I mean, he certainly deserves a chance to coach again. But you nailed it college or somewhere else it won't be the nfl they won't hire him again and as for colin just like tim tebow i i i treat both of them the same way dude neither one of you are better than warren moon or jeff garcia 
or Cam Wake or Mark Dixon or um, Ricky Williams or uh, Doug Flutie or so many others that were told no, rejected, and then had to go to the CFL to re 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 you know build up their careers again and they did and moon went to the hall of fame uh with it so if kaepernick thought he was really a quarterback like warren moon did like jeff garcia did he would have gone to to the cfl and prove it just like tim tebow you know that's where i always hold it against those guys because you have an option wait cam wake was told giants said yeah you know no you're not good enough and then he went to go freeze his ass in the cfl and then he came back here and He'll be in the ring of honor one day for the I Miami wish Tebow would play in the CFL. I would have liked to have seen that. Right, right. It would have been fun to see both of those guys go to the NFL because if if Cap goes to the CFL and kicks ass, it becomes a problem here in the in the NFL. Half the league, half the fan bases are going to go crazy going, Cap's kicking ass over there. You better bring him here. We need a quarterback because half the league needs a quarterback. Cap could have created his own hell by just going to the CFL and, and, and ball out. If he could have, you know, and he would have been able to do it. But it is what it is. How psyched should Dolphin fans be about next season? Because I feel really good now about this this coaching staff. I love what I'm seeing on the offensive side. Yeah, I think there's, um, you know, anytime you have a fresh slate of coaches, uh, there's cause for optimism and enthusiasm. Um, you know, I just like the positive energy that this guy is bringing. I think it's gonna we're going to have some fun. And I think the players will maybe, you know, loosen up a little bit with us in the media. You know, it was always, it was always this God. fear yes. of, uh, you know, one guy says, you know, one thing and it's like blown into this huge deal. Uh, and I think we're going to be able to move away from that and, and just sort of get back to normal human relations. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you there. I'm, I'm psyched about it. I really, there's a method to the madness, isn't there? That's what it seems like how he's how he's structuring this whole thing, right? It, it seems like it. Yeah, like I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I think McDaniel is hiring guys who he believes are are good teachers, good communicators, and smart people. And uh, you know, it doesn't matter if it's high school, college, or the NFL. Uh, that, that that's what matters. Can you get your message across? Can you develop a trust with your players? Uh, and can you teach them the right techniques? And uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about this coaching staff. I'm with you, bro. I'm looking forward to reading your writing and Hal also, who does an excellent job helping you out covering the Miami Dolphins. Follow him on Twitter at Shad Joe and catch his work there at the Palm Beach Post. Better yet, do what I do. Subscribe and support. Not only do we support him by giving uh, extra work here with us, but we also subscribe to the Palm Beach Post, baby. Joe, thank you, my brother. We'll catch you on Friday. Thanks, Big O. See you, bud. You got it. There you go. The great Joe Shad, well-rested in the keys. I love the keys. All right. That's Joe Shad. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.